James and Henry were excited. There's a new type of diesel that is running on the other railway, Henry announced. They say that on the other railway, there are these things called high-speed trains, said James. They have a diesel engine at each end and can go 125 miles an hour. Gordon snorted. An engine at each end? He said scornfully. There's only one of me, and I bet that I can go faster than those smelly boxes on wheels. Probably faster, he added. The other engines said nothing. They had heard Gordon's boasting before. The next morning, Gordon was still bragging. Speed's nothing to me, he said. Why, one of my Doncaster cousins went 125 miles an hour. I'll show these diesels a thing or two. Just you wait and see. The engines took no notice. Gordon puffed grandly towards the station. He normally pulled the express, though Henry and James helped if Gordon was ill or away. Many visitors came to the Fat Controller's Railway. They often used the express, so it was usually full and heavy. Sometimes, Thomas, Percy, and Edward would help the engines start from stations, or help them get up Gordon's Hill. There had been frost during the night, and now the weather was wet and sleety. Sleet settled on the rails, making an icy film across the surface. The carriages of the express stood under a cover of the station roof, but when Gordon was coupled up to them, his cabin front end stood outside. As Gordon waited for the passengers to get into the carriages, and for the guard to blow his whistle and wave his green flag, he started to get bored. Come on! He shivered impatiently. Let's get going! At last, Gordon heard the guard's whistle. Come on! Come on! Come on! He shouted as he tried to pull away quickly. But his wheels slipped on the icy rails. The sudden movement weighed water and his boilers surged forward. And Gordon's driver could not shut off steam. Gordon moved to the yard and slithered to a standstill, held back by the heavy train. His wheels spun furiously, but neither Gordon nor his train budged an inch. Help! Help! Gordon wailed desperately, but nobody did. Gordon's wheels spun and spun until his rods ached, but he could do nothing to stop them. His driver tried every trick he knew. An inspector came and tried to stop Gordon, but it was no good. The fat controller came to see what the fuss was about. He shouted several things to Gordon, but Gordon was making such a noise that he couldn't hear them. Sparks showered from the rails, but Gordon's wheels kept on spinning. It was a quarter of an hour before Gordon had used up all his steam. The reduced pressure allowed the driver to close the regulator, and with a deep sigh of relief, Gordon felt his wheels stop spinning. The silence was amazing. Edward came to take Gordon to the shed, and Henry came to pull the express. When the train had gone, workmen had to replace the rails where Gordon had been standing, because his wheels had worn deep groves into them. The shed was empty when Edward arrived with Gordon. There you are, Gordon, said Edward, and he happily ran off back to work. That night, the other engines were in the shed with Gordon. Gordon said nothing, but he could hear the other engines talking. Hey, did you hear about how Gordon went for a spin today? hissed Thomas. There was a quiet chuckle. Gordon seethed in silence. High-speed engines are all very well, 
said Edward. But, added James, Gordon should know by now that he's supposed to move his train, too. Gordon snorted disgustedly and went to sleep, and the whisper subsided into silence.